boy from French Lick. Story by Francine Popo Rich. Illustrated by Robert Casilla. French Lick, Indiana, is the town where Larry Bird grew up in the 1970s. There are no movie theaters, no McDonald's, no nightclubs, and no malls. But it does have lots of fields and basketball courts, and it is full of decent, hard-working people who all know and care for each other. Larry has never felt more comfortable living any other place. But Larry's childhood was not perfect. It was hard sometimes. When he was young, his family moved more than 15 times from one rented home to another. Sometimes it was because the rent might be cheaper, and sometimes it was in search of a better furnace to keep the bird bodies warm. One time, when they moved to a home just down the block, Larry and his sister, Linda, piled beds, a sofa, and everything else they could fit on their little red wagon and pulled the wagon to their new home. Larry didn't much care what other people might think about that. Larry was always tall for his age. By the time he was in first grade, he was quite a bit taller than the other children in his class. His first grade teacher, Mrs. Beatty, said, because he was so big, he would just knock those little ones down as he ran to his desk. Yet he always helped them up and brushed them off. He was a leader, and the kids loved him. Larry's father worked as a furniture finisher in a piano factory, and Larry's hardworking mother always had more than one job as a cook or a waitress to help support the family. She would go food shopping on Saturday and would come home with bags and bags of food. But by Thursday, the food would be gone and there was no money to buy more. So for the next couple of days, the Bird family would eat just peanut butter and bread. This didn't bother Larry much. It's just the way things were. While their parents were working, Larry's sister often watched her rough and tumble brothers. The Bird boys looked for ways to keep busy and compete against each other in the house. One time, they cut the bottoms out of two coffee cans and nailed the cans to two doors at opposite ends of the hallway. They used a tennis ball and managed to play full court, man-to-man -man basketball. Next to one of his homes, Larry had a small baseball field with a concrete wall. As a young boy, he took a rubber or tennis ball to that wall and played for hours. On the weekends, he played baseball there with his two older brothers, Mark and Mike. But they were bigger and stronger, and Larry would have to take balls and often wouldn't be allowed to bat. Their athletic skills quietly challenged Larry to improve his own. Even though baseball was actually the sport Larry loved and played the most as a young child, one day, when he was 13, he and his family visited his aunt in Hobart, Indiana. A three-hour drive in a borrowed car, the longest trip he had ever taken with his family. He went for a walk that day and found some older kids playing basketball. They asked him if he wanted to play. When he began sinking shot after shot, his teammates were slapping him on the back, congratulating him, and asking him what team he played on. He wasn't on a team. They were shocked and asked if he could come up to Hobart the following week and play again. Larry smiled and went home, hooked on basketball forever. Every morning from that point forward, Larry Bird practiced. In ninth grade, he made the high school B team which meant he could go to all the games. He shot 500 free throws in the gym before school every morning, went to practice after school, and then remained by himself to shoot more. He didn't know how good he was. He just knew he wanted to be better. Larry watched his brother Mark play in Mark's last game as a senior. Larry held his breath as Mark made several free throws that helped the Spring Valley Blackhawks win the game. Tears streamed down Larry's face because he couldn't believe how much he loved this game and how proud he was to be Mark's brother. On the bus ride home, Mark sat right next to Larry, the little brother. Later, Larry would wear Mark's number 33 on all his jerseys.
By the time Larry was in 10th grade, he was so interested in playing basketball that he just couldn't get himself to play on the baseball team. He just had to play basketball. By now, he was also six feet two inches tall and practicing constantly. Early in the season, though, Larry broke his ankle going for a rebound. He was unable to play most of the season, but he continued to stand every day, propped up on crutches, taking his free throws and passing the ball. During this time, Larry learned something that he believes many players don't understand, that passing is more of an art than scoring. He believes that when a player is open, that player should get the ball. It doesn't matter who scores, as long as it's somebody on your team. And with crutches in tow, Larry practiced getting the ball to that open player. All that crutch playing paid off for Larry. By the end of his sophomore year, his ankle was better and he played the final seconds of a tournament game. With only four seconds left on the clock, a player fouled Larry. The Blackhawks were down by one point. Larry went to the free throw line. He told himself he was going to make both free throws and win the game, and he did. The next day, the newspaper read, Bird steals the show. After that, Larry spent hours every day drumming up drills to improve his game. Along the way, a lot of people doubted Larry's abilities. They felt he was slow. He was from a small town. He couldn't jump high. He had trouble playing against the bigger guys. He wasn't good on defense. Some felt he wasn't even a good athlete. Larry didn't much care what other people might think about him or his abilities as a basketball player. He responded to the doubts of others, the determination and a will to be the best basketball player he could possibly be. For Larry, basketball was not about fancy moves or high-flying, mind-boggling tricks that would wow the crowd. Basketball was about spending hours every day perfecting the fundamental basic skills of the game. Basketball was about practicing. He listened to everything his high school coach, Jim Jones, told him. He practiced the reverse pivot, playing with both hands, boxing out, getting rebounds, and throwing a hard one-handed bounce pass. These are the tools of Larry Bird's success. Nothing fancy, nothing new. Larry didn't mind working hard because he was learning more about the game he loved. He just kept playing and playing all day, every day. Most of the time, he didn't even know why, but he did know that he was getting better and he was getting taller. By junior year, Larry was six feet, four inches tall. During the school year, he met Coach Jones at the school every day at 6 a.m. for free throw. Over the summer, he practiced on and off with Jonesy every day. Some summer days, Larry played for 14 hours. He was with his coach so much that his coach even cut his hair. On days when he was tired and didn't want to get out of bed, Jonesy would come to his house and wake him up. And when Coach Jones wasn't waking him up, Lizzie Kearns was. Lizzie Kearns was Larry's grandmother. Because Larry had so many brothers and sisters living in a small home, he often stayed at his grandmother's house, which was also in French Lick. She was Granny, and she was one of the most influential people in young Larry's life. In high school, he would take naps on her floor before his games and sleep at her house for months at a time. When he tried sleeping through his early morning free throws, she would gently come in and say, Larry, those other boys are down there practicing. You should be down there with them. And Granny nursed Larry when he was sick. You lie down and rest, and maybe you'll get to feeling better, she would say. Then she'd give him an aspirin and a chest rub and put him to sleep. In Granny's home, there was always room for Larry, his troubles, and his basketball schedule. And there was always love. Through it all, Larry kept growing. By his senior year, he was six feet seven inches tall, and he was one of the best basketball players in the state of Indiana. But even the best players sometimes make big mistakes. 
In a 1974 mid-season game between Larry's Springs Valley Blackhawk and the Luguti High Lions, Larry broke away, ran down the court, and sank a perfect two-pointer in the wrong basket. Unfortunately for Larry and the Blackhawks, the Lions won that night by one point. But this didn't stop college recruiters from lining up to invite Larry Bird to play on their college teams. They had a hunch that he would never stop improving his game. Still, some college coaches, such as the coach for the University of Kentucky, thought maybe Larry was too slow and would have trouble making shots against bigger players. Larry didn't much care what anybody thought about him or the future of his game. He loved French Lick. In fact, he would have been perfectly happy to continue with the job he had had when he was 18, working for the French Lick Street Department. He loved that job. He loved mowing grass, removing snow, fixing roads, and picking up trash. He worked outside, keeping his town clean, and he loved it. But he also loved playing basketball, and he just couldn't get enough of it. Larry Bird, at his full height of 6 feet 9 inches, did go on to become a leader on the Indiana State University's basketball team. He did go on to play in the NBA for 13 seasons on the Boston Celtics. Those Celtics did win the NBA championship title in 1981, 1984, and 1986. He was voted the most valuable player more than once in the NBA, and he did win an Olympic gold medal in 1992. He even went on to coach the Indiana Pacers, teaching those younger players to focus on the fundamentals just like he did. And all of that is very nice, but Larry Bird himself would tell you that he doesn't much care about all that hoopla. He's still the same hick from French Lick, and darn